Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about reading, one of my favorite things in the world besides yoga. And today I'm gonna to tell you how I read consistently over 100 books a year. This year I'm on track to read at least 200 books. So every year you will read more and more and more. It's sort of like a rock once it gets rolling, it just kind of keeps rolling downhill on its own. So that's the good news, it gets easier as you go. Tip number one is only read what you're in the mood to read. So I read up to 30 books at the same time, and for some people that will be too much. And I know it's overwhelming to hear even maybe reading more than one book at a time. I used to be one of those people who would only read one book at a time. But over the years, like the past five years or so, I've slowly added to the amount of books that I'm reading at a time at any given time. And I can't even tell you how much that has increased my reading because if there's ever a time when I think, hmm, maybe I should read right now, there's always gonna be a book that will fit the mood that you're in. But if you're only reading one or two or even three books, you might feel like, mm, yeah, I'm in the mood to read, but I'm not really in the mood to read that book. I don't wanna start another book until I finish that book. So I'm just not gonna read right now. I'm gonna do something else. That's your mistake. Just open a new book. And here's the thing, like sometimes I end up reading too many books, even I will admit it. It gets overwhelming. I feel like I'm never gonna finish some of the books that I've started a long time ago. So my tip number two is to track what you're reading. You might already do this, but if not, there is Goodreads, which is free, which is great, but I think it is owned by Amazon, so that's not great. You can just use an Excel sheet. There are other alternatives to Goodreads if that's not for you and you don't want to support Amazon, and I will link below to a list of 10 alternatives to Goodreads. But the point is just use a system, and an added benefit of using a system is not only can you track all the books that you're reading at once to make it feel more manageable and contained, but also it'll get you excited about other books coming out because you'll see what other people are reading. It's social media. So you'll see what other people are reading. You'll see that other people are reading and it'll help motivate you to continue and to get reading. Tip number three is read throughout the day. So I already made a video recently of what my typical day looks like in reading. And you'll see that I read all throughout the day. So I'll usually listen to an audiobook right away when I wake up. And then as I drink my coffee, I'll either continue to listen or I might read a book on my phone for my e-reader. And then when I'm kind of getting sick of work and need a break, I'll take a break and I'll read a book. And then while my partner is cooking dinner, I'll read a book. So for you, these, th these times might be times to do other things like listen to podcasts or listen to music or call up a friend. And all those things are great too. If those things are really bringing you a lot of joy, keep doing those things. But if during those times you're just kind of scrolling mindlessly on social media and you're really not feeling good after doing that, see if you can replace some of those breaks throughout your day with a reading break. Even just five minutes is better than no minutes of reading. It's the same thing like with yoga. You can read just for a couple minutes. And actually, some of these books are good examples of that. This book, for instance, How to Be Happy All the Time is a yoga book, but it's one of those books that just has these kind of very short little bits so you could just open it every day and just read it'll take less than a minute to read one of these little sections and yeah it'll take you a long time to get through the book that way but at the end of the year you'll have gotten through another book and you can also do this for fiction so you can find fiction that has really short chapters for example my brilliant friend has very short chapters although you might get sucked in so that's always a risk with fiction so for example here here's the start of a new chapter and let's see how far this one goes just there to the next page all these chapters are really short and quick. You can read them at any time. Um, it'll just take a couple minutes. Tip number four is read shorter books. I know this might sound like it's kind of a cheat, but it's not. And also short books aren't necessarily always the fastest books to get through. For instance, the smallest, shortest book I have here in the stack, it's a very short introduction introduction to child psychology, but it's, it's an introduction from an academic perspective. So even though this is only 120 pages or so and they're small pages, this isn't gonna be the fastest book to get through. But you can find really fast, slim novellas, for instance, or even kids' books. I mean, not like picture books, or, or picture books if you want. Books are really for all ages. I don't think that there should be an age limit on any books, but yesterday I read one of my favorite books from childhood, um, The Island of the Blue Dolphins, and it can be kind of cool to revisit some of your childhood favorites and see how they read now that you're older. They're really fast to get through, they're short, they definitely count as books for your reading challenge if you're doing a challenge, and there's no shame in reading short books on purpose. Tip number five is for people who don't have as much intrinsic motivation and have a little bit more of an accountability um, way of getting things done, join a reading group or a book club. 
In fact, join more than one. If you're really trying to up your reading and you need some external um, accountability, my recommendation is to join more than one book club. And also, if you're just trying to increase the volume of your reading, maybe join a book club that reads less serious, less intense books, maybe fiction. Or there are groups like for adults who read YA or children's books. That external accountability will, will really help you keep going and keep on a schedule because they'll have the dates that you need to read the books by. And it is fine to join more than one book club. You can join a YA book club, a kids book club, and an adults book club. Or you could join like a Beach Reads book club, a more literary fiction book club, a nonfiction book club. Whatever that you want to read, it's out there. There's a club. You should join it. Number six is don't worry about what you think you should be reading. Obviously, throughout this video, you've gotten the idea that my vibe is that read whatever you want and all books are books and there's a book for everybody. Every book has its reader and every reader has its book. Don't feel shame or judgment for whatever you want to read. You don't need to tell people what you're reading. If you do feel embarrassed about it, that's fine. Just read it and keep it a secret. <laughs> you can read romance. You can read YA. You can read kids books. You can read erotica. You can read whatever you want and that is awesome and count those books towards your 100 book reading challenge or however much you end up making your reading challenge. But this, the easiest way to slow and stall your reading is to read a book just because you feel like you should be reading it. If you're not into it, just give up. It's okay. That's tip number seven. If you're really, really not into a book, it's okay to give up. And I had a hard time learning this one myself. I hate not finishing a book, especially if I've invested a lot in it. Um, so for instance, I was reading this like 600 page Proust book, maybe 500 pages, but the point is I got like halfway into it. So I'd already read the length of a regular book, like 250 pages, and I just dreaded reading it. I didn't really feel like I was getting enough out of it to make it worth it. I felt like I should read it because everyone talks about Proust and like how that is, you know, part of this lineage of the modern novel and fiction. And it was the second book in his series and I just finally gave up and gave it away. I sold the book, I, I was done with it, I didn't finish it. Now I can never say that I fully read it, but I read the first book and you know what, that's good enough. I don't need to read all six books to get an idea of what that was. If I had enjoyed it, it would have been great to keep reading. Or perhaps there is a book that you really want to get through even though you don't like it and there is some reason that you really want to get through it and that's okay but let yourself read a bunch of other books at the same time and maybe make a goal such as, okay, this book is really important for me to get through because let's say it's for class or a family member told you it really meant a lot to them if you would read it or just, you know, it's sort of like part of the canon of whatever you're interested in. That's fine, but what I would do in that situation is every morning when I got up and had my coffee, I would read a set amount of pages of that book, let's say 10 pages or 20 pages. And it was sort of like the first like to-do item for my day so treat that book like work because if that's the attitude that you're having to that you're approaching it with like this is something i have to do that i don't really want to do that's work just because you're not getting paid for it that's work so treat it like work add it to your work day it's something that you do to check off a list and that's fine but don't let that be the only reading experience you have supplement that with a ton of enjoyable reading experiences all right thanks so much for watching those are my seven tips on how to read at least 100 books a year Comment below if you have any questions, follow-up questions, ideas, tips, tricks, suggestions. I'd love to hear it and what you're reading and what you're enjoying lately. And please subscribe if you haven't yet liked this video, if you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again soon.